Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn about logging in Java. The application that you are trying to develop or if you are working on an existing application, you would definitely come across logging. So what is logging? Logging is writing user actions or application state to a file which then later can be used by the support team or the operations team to know what is happening in the application. It can also be used to troubleshoot issues uh, reported by the end users. Okay, so what are different APIs and frameworks that you can use for logging? As you can see, we have Java Util Logging. This is basically a package within Java, also called as JUL. We have Log4j, Apache Commons Logging, also called as JCL, SLF4j, Logback, and Log. 4j2 with all these different apis and frameworks and now you might get confused which one you should be using okay so what we're going to do is we're going to look at each one of these and try to understand the basics of each frameworks and apis and also understand if uh, you know they are legacy apis or if they are still you know uh, in, uh, with official support and pe being periodically upgraded okay so let's start with java util logging as i said uh, jul um, is a package within jdk and it was introduced as a part in java 1.4 in 2002. jul came with the concept of handlers to configure loggers example file handlers to write logging statements to files console handlers to write uh, logging statements to system console the main disadvantage using JUL was uh, the complexity involved in configuring the loggers and also the performance. Okay, the performance was slow when using JUL. And also the method names uh, were such that it, uh, you know, does not read actually what it does. Like if you see here, we have method severe for error messages and fine for debug message. So with all these uh, disadvantages, you know, uh, with complexity and performance and uh, inconsistency with uh, the APIs in JUL, people started thinking of alternatives. And uh, then developers started using Log4j, which was released in 2001, and the official support was till 2015. Okay, unlike JUL, log4j um, used the concept of appenders to configure loggers. And it came with, you know, a bunch of appenders like file appenders to write log statements to files, console appenders to write to the system console, SMTP appenders to email log events, JDBC appenders to send logs to the database, a rolling appenders to roll the log files on daily basis or specified configuration like if you want to roll the log file when it reaches the maximum size of 10 mb you can do that using rolling appenders it also has uh, pattern layouts which is used to print the log statements in specified pattern also and also the method names you can see um, were such that it reads what it does like info for info messages error for error messages and debug for debug messages right and this was quite you know used quite for some time and you can find this in your legacy applications also the main disadvantage is uh, using jul and log4j directly in your application is that you know you are you're tying up or to say tightly coupling your application to a specific logging API. Okay, let's assume that if you're using JUL in an application, okay, and now you want to switch to log4j or vice versa, okay. So doing that, what happens is you are having all your logging statements in all the class files 
and you have to go and update each and every file and the login statements to whatever specific you know your uh, logging api that you want you're going to use so that is actually not a recommended way where you update all the files right and also it involves a lot of work so with this issue uh, people started using you know a logging framework called apache commons logging which was released in 2002 and also called as jakarta commons logging jcl this used a concept of you know interface also called as specification now what is logging interface it is same concept as we have in java in java we have uh, you know in within the interface we have uh, methods that are declared and the implementation class will have the actual implementation of the methods from the interface right so you can use the same concept here where the jcl is nothing but an interface you can call and also a specification which is added to your class path and then you use all the apis from the jcl okay all the interfaces all this you know all the classes that comes from directly from the jcl now as an implementation what you do is you add either jul or log4j in your class path so internally jcl is going to use the one that is in your class path okay and you can see that once you add jcl okay in your project then you can use all the apis from the jcl okay and the method names also are similar like info error and debug you can use them and what it does um, you also need to add is either jul or log4j whatever you want to use then internally jcl is going to invoke the implementation from the one that you have in your class path so this way the you know the manual work involved in updating all the classes that gets resolved you don't need to you know update all the logging statements all you need to do is if you want to switch between logging apis all you need to do is just update the implementation api in your class path and internally what the jcl is going to do is it is going to use the the one that is in the class path okay so with this feature you know it was all good people started using the specification rather than using direct the implementation all good and few years later we have slf 4j and log back slf 4j was released in 2005 and stands for simple logging facade for java now facade is something that is in front of and the actual implementation that's what facade means okay and it is it uses the same concept of logging interface also called a specification similar to what we have in jcl the slf slf 4j and logback uh, was developed by the same developer who created log 4j that is seiki Tolku. okay now instead of naming it as log 4j version 2 he named it as logback okay now logback is the native implementation of slf 4j So how can you use slf 4j in your application all you need to do is just add the dependency that is slf 4j api dependency in your class path and then the actual implementation whether it may be a log 4j jul or log back whichever you want to use you then add that into the class path the same concept as you saw in you saw in jcl right the actual implementation uh, sorry the specification that you have and all the classes and interfaces that you can use in your you know logging statements okay and now here you might have a doubt what happens if there are multiple logging apis within the class path okay 
like what I'm uh, what I mean is uh, assume that you have a project that is using SLF 4G and logback as the implementation and you're using a third party application that is a third party API that uses log 4G as the logging API so when you add that third party library to your class path what it is also going to do is it's going to pull the log 4j to your class path dependency right so what happens in that case what happens is when you try to start the application it's going to fail uh, with exception saying that there is a conflict between you know the logging apis in the class path so what you, to resolve such issue what you need to do is you need to make sure you exclude the dependency from your project that is when you're trying to add the third party library as a dependency in your project assume that it's in maven project and in pom.xml file you added a dependency of a third party library then what you do is you add an exclude for the log4j dependency and if it is using a log 4 j api okay then you exclude that and then include the bridging library okay now so what is bridging library it's basically a bridge you know that is used by the slf 4j with the logging api that is being used within the third party library okay if a third party library is using log 4j then you have log 4j over slf 4j and if it is using jul then you have jul to slf 4j and if the third party library is using jcl then you can use you know you can add the dependency of jcl over slf 4j so what this bridging library is going to do is it uh, the slf 4j is going to use this bridge bridging library to uh, and make use of the third party uh, logging implementation okay so i, I hope, hope that, that is clear, clear. So, so in your real time, time project if you are in the, in a situation where you have uh, you know you are making use of slf 4g and logback okay and the third party library is using any other logging um, implementation api then you know to resolve the conflict issue in the class path you can use the bridging library and exclude the the library that is being used within the third party api okay so i hope that is clear with this uh, is this the end of all the logging apis and frameworks not yet okay we have another framework called log 4j2 okay so this is an upgrade to our legacy log 4j and was released in 2014 and inspired from other logging frameworks and overcomes all the issues and drawbacks that the other logging frameworks has the main advantages are improved performance it supports asynchronous logging it supports java 8 lambda expressions and also it also and also it has the garbage collection feature advanced feature of you know uh, when working with garbage collections so with all these advantages you know this log 4j is the recommended logging api you know if you're, if you're developing an application and this being the youngest in all the logging frameworks out there so how do we use you know log 4g in our application first is the specification that is the api you can see that um, the the dependency that you are adding here is log 4g api and the version is 2 you can use you know you can look at the official site and look at the current version but if the major version is 2 here okay and then you have the core implementation uh, and log 4j code that is what you need to add as a dependency and with these two in your class path you can then you know make use of the log 4j version 2 um, 
logging APIs in your application. Now here log4j2 is also similar to what we have with SLF4j and JCL. It also uses the uh, logging inter interface concept where you think you know if you want to just use the specification and the implementation you want to use like SLF4j implementation that is log back you can do that by just you know not including this the, the log4j core rather using the log back in your class path okay so i don't find him you know a a reason why you, you would be doing that but you know just to know that yes we do have an option where you can give a different logging implementation in your class path when using log4j2 api okay so with this now we have a question like in real time project which one should we should be using either slf4j or log4j2 now if you're using slf4j with native implementation logback it's all good okay you don't need to think about any other you know um uh, like for log4j2 okay it is also being uh, periodically upgraded that is slf4j and also uh, it is it is having uh, you know long-term support so no issues there and with performance uh, you will not even notice the performance issue when you're uh, using slf4j compared to log4j2 okay the one thing you need to remember here is if you're using spring boot and, uh, and it's a spring web application then slf4j um, the default implementation is log back but if you are you know developing an application now then the recommended logging api would be log4j2 because it has a lot of features uh, like asynchronous logging and also the lambda 8 java 8 lambda expression support with all those features and also the improved uh, garbage collection feature with log 4 j2 okay so i hope now you are uh, you know now you have a basic idea of different logging apis and frameworks uh, uh, in java and uh, depending on your requirements if you are working on a legacy application you know uh, you know which uh, api you need to use and if you are developing an application then i would recommend you using log4j2 okay that's all for this video and i will see you in the next session